Alright, hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Brian, back with another quick tip, game-changing idea here. <clears throat> um, so today I want to talk about some harmony ideas and ways that you can really fatten up your playing in blues or even, you know, that sounded uh, jazzy, swingy kind of tune, but it was just over a straight 12-bar blues in the key of G. <clears throat> um, whenever I used to listen to old, like, swing records, um, players like, you know, great horn players that, that had a, a big rhythm section, I would always hear a lot of movement in the harmony, and I could never quite pinpoint what it was. And I spent a lot of time just listening to, uh, like, you know, I'll pop on a slowdowner and put on an old Sinatra tune, or Johnny Hodges or Charlie Parker, and I'm listening to the movement in the background, whether it's the organ player, if there's a horn section doing it. And to me, what I hear is, is just over one chord, a lot of movement harmonically, but it doesn't change the, the, the tonal center at all. So all of those moves that I was doing, say over the one chord, they were all just variations of a G dominant chord and a lot of little half steps in between. So this is a really cool concept to get a lot more life out of your rhythm playing. And even if you're playing solo, I'll do this kind of thing all the time if I'm doing a bluesy thing just to make it sound like there's a whole lot going on. Um, and so there's no real uh, specific lesson here other than I'll give you some shapes that you can play around with. But the concept for me here is I tried to play every single half step. No matter what key I'm in, let's just say I'm starting on G, so I want to start on this G. I want to find a way to play a chord with a melody note that is uh, every single step of the way up. Okay, and once you get good at that, then you can mix and match. You don't have to use them all. You can use some. You can use only the diatonic ones if you want. You can use a whole lot of the non-diatonic ones and get all those passing tones in there. Totally up to you. But, so let me just give you an example here. And there's so many possibilities, so I'll, I'll just run through a couple. So, <clears throat> get a little closer here to our fretboard. Sorry guys, I really don't have pro equipment. I'm not that guy. Maybe I will at some point. So let's just say we're looking over a, over our G, G7. Okay, well, check it out. Let's, let's do this diatonically first. So I'm in a G blues or, a, you know, a G swing thing here. I'm going to go for my Nixolydian notes first. Those are the ones that are going to fit. And so we have in, in the key of G, and we're just going to go up on one string here. We have G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. That's our Mixolydian scale in G. Right, it has that flatted seventh. Okay, so it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, flatted seventh, and then you're back at the root. So we can first start by trying to interlay chords in with those particular notes as our, our high notes, as our melody notes. So, you know, I might just grab a G7 here. Okay, this is just the top four notes of a G7 bar chord, right? So I have three, four, three, three. Okay, next I could play, and I love this chord, a, a G13. Okay, and now all I'm doing, I've kept the same two low notes and I've moved the two high notes up to five and five. So now I have three, four, five, five. Okay, that's our second note in G mixolydian. Our third note was this B note. Okay, so let's look at our options here. B, that B note, is in a G7 chord. So I can grab that G7 there. The shape I have there is five, seven, six, seven. Five, seven, six, seven. Okay, that's cool, I can grab that shape. Uh, moving up, our next note is a C. This is the fourth. Well, check this out. Now I can just keep this chord here and suss this out. So now I have a, a G7 sus four. And that shape is five, seven, six, eight. Okay, our next note in the scale is a D note. Okay, this is cool. I can grab a, I'll grab that a lot, this G9 shape. And here I have 9, 10, 10, 10. 
right? You could make that a straight uh, G7 by going 9, 10, 8, 10. But why not mess around with some 9s and 11s and 13s and all that stuff? So if you can see my fingers there, I would use that fingering. First finger on the 9th fret, uh, then bar with the 3rd finger on 10, 10, 10. And you can always throw the low G back in there too. Okay, our next note is an E. This is cool. This is the 6th or the 13th in the key. Another, you know, sort of out, out of the box note. I love this one. So you could keep that same shape and just add your pinky. So now instead of 9, 10, 10, 10, I have 9, 10, 10, 12. Our next shape, we can just grab another G7 here by playing uh, 12, 12, 12, 13. And then if we're just going to conclude the scale, we can end back with the first shape. Okay, and in this case, we're at 15, 16, 15, 15. That's the same shape here, though. Okay, so let's just play that. Um, without any of those in-between passing chords or passing tones. So we had... Okay, those are cool. Those all work. Trust me when I say you can get so many different variations of chord underneath what that high melody note is doing. You know, you can always make it a 13th or a 9th or an 11th. Um, you could play altered tones in certain situations. But if you're new to this, just play around with these shapes. Okay, now here's where it gets really cool, and it's it's actually really easy. With so many of these chord shapes, I can simply play a half note behind and then move up a half note. So I can get, let's just look between this first G7 and this G13. I'm going to do this as my little trick. That's it. I'm playing the same chord. Technically, I'm playing an F-sharp 13 here and moving it into a G13. But when you do that uh, nice and smooth and quick, you know, take a listen to how it sounds. Okay, and so uh, I'm doing a lot of that as I'm moving up. So I have G7. G13 with a slide in note. Now check it out. We played a G7 here. Do the same thing. F sharp 7 into that G7. Okay, you can do that. I tend to like to do a, uh, a diminished chord here instead. All I'm all the only difference that I'm doing here is I'm keeping my my G here on the root instead of the F sharp. So it's That's the only one note difference. Instead of being F sharp, just slide that note up. Okay, because I love being able to do that slide. Okay, now I could still grab my G7 like we had before. And now coming into my G9, same idea. Half, slips, half, half step slide in. And then, I mean, the, again, Bunch of options, but let's just try this. Going into the G13, just do a little half step with the pinky. Okay, so again, let's take a look. Okay, we have two more moves. We have this G7, and then I'm just going to do an F sharp 7 into a G7 to end it. Ah, oh, sorry. All right, look, there's a lot to uh, unpack there. <clears throat> but the concept is you can take a lot of these notes and just do a half-step move. Find different chord voicings, 13ths, 11ths, uh, altered chords, especially over the 5 chord when you go to D in the key of G. All right, you guys, I hope that was helpful. Um, my name is Brian. I do give virtual lessons. If anyone is interested, please shoot me a message, and uh, we'll catch up with you next time. Thanks.